First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Switzerland police are actively searching for suspects in connection with last month's Paris attacks. Coming up, find out how the CIA is also involved. Divers are still searching the lake in San Bernardino for possible evidence related to last week's terrorist attack. And as active shooter situations become a growing concern for Americans, Gainesville police weigh in on the advice that's circulating online. That's our top story tonight. Good evening. It's December 11th. I'm James Torres. And I'm Ashlyn Reese. And for Jenna Sands, thanks for joining us. Active shooter situations are such a nightmare you may not think any preparation is going to help. But police say there are factors we should all know. Darling Hill joins us now in the studio with more advice that police are giving. Well, when you hear screams and gunfire, it boils down to just three choices, run, hide, or fight. In the last couple of years, there have been several massive sh active shooter events. With the frequency of them, several law enforcement agencies, including GPD, are posting a video that tells everyday citizens what to do if they are to find themselves in an unpredictable situation Recent like this Recent mass one. shootings have many worried, and they have brought out different viewpoints on gun control, mental health, terrorism, and other factors. Now law enforcement agencies are starting to talk about preparedness. Some agencies like GPD are posting to their websites a run, hide, fight video about dealing with active shooters. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. Several UF students say they have given the idea more thought, especially after the FSU shooting late last year. Of course, I have many friends at Florida State who, who uh, are, are now avoiding libraries and, and are uh, still scared of something similar happening at their school, which is uh, awful, of course. It shouldn't be something people have to worry about on a regular basis. Choosing whether to run or hide or fight can be hard in a life or death situation. It depends on where the shooter is and what options are at hand. Open areas like Turlington Plaza are potential targets for shooters. Now the video says you should run, hide, or fight in the event of a shooting, but areas such as this one don't offer places to seek shelter. And while running and hiding seems to be the first option for most, fighting is still in mind. If hiding is not an option, then I would run and fight because I'm not going to go down without a fight. The video shows some scenarios where fighting Always back might answer. work. If you're hiding, no, stay low, like even when this. police start to arrive, because their first priority randomly. is to take out the shooter. The As law enforcement is responding to the scene, uh, the first concern that we have is responding law enforcement in this scenario is a direct to threat response, where we are going to go into the building and try to locate and neutralize the threat as quickly as possible. It's not to render aid, it's not to evacuate victims, which is not normal for law enforcement. This can make a difference for your safety. The University of Florida Police Department also has resources on its website to help students understand what they should do in an Active shooting situation. There is a link to a one hour interactive web based course from FEMA that allows you to go through the process of how to respond to a shooting in an everyday setting. Darling Hill, WUFT News. Thanks, Darling. The Florida Police Chiefs Association has voted to support a controversial open carry bill as long as it's amended in several ways. The police chiefs on the board of directors voted two to one to support the bill, a move that comes after Florida sheriffs voted five to one to oppose. The NRA has said the main purpose of the bill is to keep those with concealed carry permits from being charged after someone just catches a glimpse of the weapon. The amendments would require holsters for open carry, would not cover anyone who is showing their weapon to back a threat, and would give police more legal cover for questioning gun owners about what exactly they're doing. This morning, an Alachio County deputy turned himself into authorities on a charge of false imprisonment. Deputy Russell Johnson was booked and released. Johnson had allegations of battery, false imprisonment, and witness tampering filed against him last month. He's on suspension pending the outcome of criminal and internal investigations. Well, we are wrapping up our work week with just another gorgeous day in North Central Florida. Yes, but UF forecaster Rebecca Kopelman is tracking some warmer weather coming our way. She joins us from the Weather Center. Rebecca? Temperatures are going to continue to rise and they're already above normal, especially for December standards. So while it is nice, it's a little unusual and across the southeast temperatures have been rising throughout the week and now even eight degrees warmer in Memphis than it was 24 hours ago, just three degrees in Gainesville and five in Jacksonville. But 
now we're approaching that 80 degree mark in the afternoons outside right now. We don't have to worry about it as much. Temperatures are going to start to fall soon as that sun sets, but it's still 76 degrees outside at the University of Florida's campus. Temperatures fall tonight through the 60s to 57 degrees by midnight, 56 by 2 a.m. And they'll fall down to the low 50s, which is still a little cool out there, but it is above average for this time of year. And there could be some patchy fog as well. So if you're up early on Saturday, you want to watch out for that on the roadways. Back to you. In the race for the White House, the talk today is about a private dinner this week in Washington where the topic was how to stop Donald Trump. And it wasn't just Democrats at the dinner, it was Republican political professionals, and they agreed the only way is to deny Trump a majority of delegates at the convention. Steve Handelsman has the latest. As Republican insiders debate how to defeat him, Donald Trump is on a roll. His call after San Bernardino for a ban on Muslims entering the U.S. sparked a firestorm, but support from many Republicans. 42% in the NBC News Wall Street Journal poll. And we have him talking very positively because people are saying, you know, Trump is right. But GOP political pros fearing Trump is wrong for the party and could not win the White House plotted ways to stop Trump at one of their regular private dinners in Washington Monday night, revealed today. These dinners are important to the process. Matt Schlapp of the American Conservative Union heard the plan that he says billionaire donors could finance. If you're an anti-Trump Republican, what you want to see happen is a smaller field where, where a small, out of that smaller number, somebody catches fire. Chris Christie is catching fire, polling second to Trump in New Hampshire where with three other early contest states, delegates can be awarded proportionally. Christie could take some to the convention, like Trump will. And in Iowa, anti-Trump forces see Ted Cruz winning delegates. And if Cruz, Christie, Ben Carson, and Marco Rubio in the primaries can deny Trump a majority of the delegates to the convention in Cleveland, some party insiders hope they can deny Donald Trump the nomination. But Carson warned, if the winner of the primaries isn't our nominee, we have a massive problem. I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News, Washington. Again, warning Republican leaders he could make a third party run, and the conventional wisdom is that would almost surely mean a win for the Democratic nominee. Divers are searching a lake in San Bernardino looking for possible evidence in last week's terrorist attack. A tip led the FBI to search the lake. The search is expected to go slow and there's no guarantee they will find anything. The search will last for days. Uh, it's very possible. Um, we would be remiss not to go into this lake and do a, conduct a thorough search for any evidentiary items that may come back. At the end of the day, we, came up, we may come up with nothing. We just don't know yet. According to local news accounts, the divers have at least once emerged with an item in a bag to hand over for further examination. But the FBI has not commented on what was found. And working on a tip from the CIA, police in Geneva are hunting for suspects allegedly linked to ISIS and believed to be plotting an attack in the city. The authorities in Geneva raised the terror threat alert Thursday morning following a tip off that four potential jihadists may have traveled to the Swiss city between Wednesday evening and Thursday morning. They also stepped up security surveillance in sensitive sites such as train stations, airports, and the headquarters of the United Nations. The possible threat, however, doesn't seem to be specific. Still, the U.S. Embassy has issued a warning for all U.S. citizens in Switzerland and for those traveling to the country to be extra cautious. And 2015 may be remembered for the bear hunt and the impact on the black bear population, but activists are also worried about the Florida panther. With another death this week, a record 37 have been killed this year, mostly as roadkill. WUFT's Kayla Kowalik joins us live from the newsroom. Kayla, you talked to FWC today and they say this increase of deaths may not necessarily be a problem. That's right. The panther expert I talked to today said that while the FWC is still concerned about the number of panther dust, it may also be a sign of a growing panther population. And that is exactly what the FWC is hoping for. Experts say there are probably 100 to 180 panthers alive in Florida right now, which is an increase from the 80s but still keeps the species on the endangered list. One panther expert says although the population has increased, there's still work to be done to move the species off the endangered list. 
The goal is to have three separate groups, each with a population of at least 240. Pick the number because that's the minimum number you need for them to sustain their genetics from one generation to the next. And so if we can hit those target numbers, um, you know, then the Panthers will be doing pretty good. Mark Criffield says one way the FWC and its partners are helping increase the Panther population is by giving them land to roam on. So, you know, a lot of public land that have been bought over the years, and that always helps. And part of the reason why we have had so much success uh, with the Panther Project and, you know, really increasing the number of Panthers that are out there. There's no way to know exactly when the population may reach acceptable levels, but Criffield feels they are on the right track despite the deaths increasing this year. It's only reflective of that there's more panthers out there because, as I mentioned in the 80s, there weren't 30 panthers out there to kill, um, you know, let alone to have die on the roads like that. One big concern is genetic diversity and inbreeding to have healthy subgroups that are spread out. So if there's a crisis that one group is hit hard by a disease or other unexpected losses, that won't happen to the entire species. Reporting from the newsroom, Kayla Kowalik, WUFT News. All right, Kayla, thank you. Well, WUFT News First at 5 is just getting started. Coming up, Gainesville artists are crafting some special items for the holiday season. We'll show off some holiday crafts made right here from the hands of North Central Floridians. Plus, The Force Awakens in Japan. Find out what the Star Wars cast was doing in a land far, far away. Those stories and more coming up in entertainment. And it's been dry for not just the past couple of days, but most of the month of December. Some changes are on the way, though, and I'll let you know when you'll need the umbrella next coming up.